Chairman, the Clips Film Partners and the Commissioners for Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. This appeal is about the powers of the first tier tribunal, the FTT, in relation to costs under, tr under the tribunal first tier tax chamber rules 2009, the rules. The story begins with the appeal of Eclipse Film Partners number 35 LLP against the issue of a notice by Revenue and Customs, which determined that Eclipse did not carry on a trade or business. If correct, this would have severely adverse tax consequences for Eclipse. Eclipse appealed to the FTT against that notice. The appeal was allocated as a complex case under Rule 23 of the rules, and Eclipse served a request under Rule 10.3 that the proceedings be excluded from potential liability for costs or expenses under Rule 10.1c. The FTT made directions which included a direction that provided that the parties should try and agree appropriate bundles of documents, which should be prepared and copied by Eclipse. But if the parties were unable to agree such a bundle, each party was to prepare and copy its own bundles. The Eclipse, that the parties were unable so to agree, and the FTT then directed that Eclipse prepare and copy bundles, and that, and I quote, the costs be shared. That was the order. Eclipse then prepared and copied the bundles, which were very extensive. Eclipse's appeal against the notice was unsuccessful. Eclipse sent the revenue invoices for over £100,000, representing half the cost of preparing the bundles. The revenue applied to the FTT to set aside the order on the ground that the FTT had no jurisdiction to give a direction that the costs of the bundle be shared in that way. The FTT dismissed the revenue's application but on the revenue's appeal, the upper tribunal held that the order was made without jurisdiction and set it aside. The Court of Appeal agreed. Eclipse now appeals to the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court unanimously dismisses Eclipse's appeal. Rule 5 deals with the FTT's management powers. Rule 5.3 refers to the power to make various directions, including in paragraph I, a direction that a party produce a bundle for a hearing. Rule 10 is headed orders for costs. With one exception, the FTT can make only two types of order for costs under Rule 10. First, a wasted costs order under 10.1a, and secondly, an order for costs where the, a party has behaved unreasonably under 10.1b. The exception is under 10.1c, which applies to a complex case under Rule 23. But that exception can be disapplied, as it was here, by an appellant's request. The reasoning of the Court of Appeal and of the Upper Tribunal was that as Rule 10.1c had been disapplied, the FTT could only make an order for costs if Rule 10.1a, wasted costs, or Rule 10.1b, unreasonable behaviour, applied, and neither of those justified the order in the present case. Eclipse raises two arguments in response. First, that the order was not an order for payment of costs, but an order for the sharing of costs. The court rejects that argument. The order would involve the revenue paying costs because they would be reimbursing Eclipse half the expenses it had incurred in preparing the bundles. The fact that the order could also be described as one for sharing of costs does not alter that point. Eclipse's second argument is that it is inherent in Rule 5.3 that the orders that the FTT makes under that rule can include terms as to costs. The court also rejects that argument as assisting F Eclipse in the present case. First, if it applied here, it would rob Rule 10.1 of much of its force. Secondly, it's inconsistent with Rules 10.3 to 10.7, which provide how costs awarded pursuant to Rule 10.1 are to be assessed and recovered. If Eclipse is right, there would be a lacuna as there are no such provisions governing the assessment and recovery of costs under Rule 5. Thirdly, Rule 16.2b, which requires the FTT to provide for the costs of a witness uh, who is made to attend a hearing to be paid for by one or other party, shows that where the rules intend the FTT to be able to render a party liable for costs, they say so. It should be added that this does not mean that the FTT cannot give permission to amend or grant an adjournment on terms as to costs. 
The appeal is accordingly dismissed. Court is now adjourned.